Hi, I'm Jung Wan. I'm one of the co-founders of Illicit. And today I want to show you how you can use Illicit to find an insane number of papers. So I think most of you are already drowning in a lot of papers, but still when you start a research project, you really care about making sure you don't miss out on a paper and having ensuring that you've really comprehensively searched the academic literature. So despite the fact that you're already drowning, I thought I would pour a little bit more of a flood your way and show you how you can use Illicit to really feel like you've very, very thoroughly combed the literature. This could also be good if you're doing a research project that doesn't have a lot of research. So if that's the case, then I think some of the techniques I'll show you today can really help you out. I'll walk through, I'll just introduce a little bit of the, of what I'm going to show you today. So some of the things I want to show you are asking multiple queries, related queries um, about the same project so that you can get different papers surfaced by different framings of the query. I'll show you how you can do citation searching, and this will let you do things like identify primary studies mentioned in a study, for example, if it's like a review, or identify like kind of work that has come after a particular paper you're interested in, or in just in general, find more papers related to or similar to certain papers that you like. I'll show you how you can find papers that match specific criteria, and I'll just sh I'll show you how you can kind of generate as many papers as you want and kind of keep going where the only limitation is your time. In a separate video, I can show you what to do once you have way too many papers. But in this one, we're gonna try and find as many papers as we can. All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna do this topic on sperm counts actually. So I've been talking to a couple of researchers who are doing work in this area. And I don't know if you've seen, but there's some information that has gone, that went viral recently or maybe in the last year or so about how sperm counts are declining. So I'll just use that as the basis for my query. I'm going to start with the find, I'll probably end up mostly using the find papers workflow today. And I'll start by putting in one specific query. So let's say I, I'm interested in seeing what papers come up when I enter sperm count measures. So we'll show you the top eight most relevant papers here, but you can keep clicking load more. You can delete any of these that don't seem relevant, but otherwise you can just keep clicking load more here and generating a lot more papers. And then again, you can look through them and see if any of them are relevant or not relevant and then clean up your list and, and prioritize them that way. So that's the first thing, pretty straightforward. Run a query, get back a list of papers, click load more until you feel like you've had enough. Great. So with one query, I've already gotten dozens and dozens of papers. And again, you can go crazy and create a list as long as you want, but you can also try a separate query because that might return different papers here. What I'll do next is click add a new step and I'll do ask a new question and find papers. So what I, basically what I'm going to do is run the exact same thing that I did, but with a different query. So now I want to do, let's say, sperm density measurement published after 2000. Maybe that's actually my uh, inclusion criteria if I'm doing a review or I just generally want to look at a specific time period. Illicit can parse these types of filters in the query itself and then it'll automatically filter to papers published after the year 2000. So this is a little bit different of a different framing for sperm count measures, but it's still related. And now I'll have a different set of papers here. And again, I can keep clicking load more and reviewing the papers and figuring out what's relevant or what's not relevant. So you can run, you can see, you can collect a bunch of papers using one query. Once you start to hit diminishing returns, try another query. And then again, repeat that same process and you know get to 50, 100, lots and lots of papers. Each query is independent. So this query doesn't build off of this one. So don't, don't ask a follow-up question about the results of this paper. This is, it's as if you open two tabs and ran two different searches, but you get to keep them all in the same project and you get to analyze the papers across these queries together. So it's a lot more convenient than running two totally separate queries in different notebooks. Okay. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to try a different query. I will once again, ask a new question, find papers. This time I'm going to search for sperm concentration among white collar workers. Also again, published after the year 2000. Just so you can see all of these papers published after the year 2000. If I want to, again, I can click load more, but in the, now I want to show you how you can do citation tr searching, the citation trail searching, searching through the citation trail forward and backwards, snowballing, whatever you want to call it. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to look through some of these papers 
And I'm going to pick one that seems most relevant, maybe semen quality and sedentary work position. I'll delete the rest. So I'll pick my paper of interest and then I'll click show more like these. And what this will do is it'll look through all the references mentioned in this paper, and it'll look through all future citations of this paper that came later. And then it'll rank by relevance to this overall query. So if you only find a couple of papers that are relevant and you want to find more like those, you can select them and then you can click show more like these. If you explicitly want to search through the citation graph, you can do that as well. So just pick the papers that you're most interested in, click show more like these, and then you'll, you'll search through their site references and citations. It's a great way to get more relevant papers. Then again, you can continue to click load more. You can use this to do an explicit search for primary studies mentioned in a review. So now let's say I ask about meta-analyses on sperm count published after the year 2000. This time it'll filter for both meta-analysis and the year range. And I will once again pick a paper. And then if I click show more like these, I'm going to get a list of you know, references in this paper and later citations. But let's say this is a, this is a meta-analysis, so I want to just understand the primary studies mentioned in this paper. What I can then do is filter for something like RCT. Maybe I'll just keep meta-analysis so I can keep this guy around. If I then limit to just randomized control trials, it will show me all the RCTs referenced in this paper. So if you want to take a review apart and find its underlying studies, you can use the, the combination of those features, show more like these and filters. And similarly, if you want to find all work that happened after a paper, so this, this paper was published in 2022, let's say actually I want to know what came after this paper, I can just filter the date to 2022 and it'll limit to the later citations of this paper. So I use this if I want to know, has this paper been refuted? How have other people talked about this paper? This is a great feature to figure out how have other papers reference this paper. And now I have, oops, you can delete this up if you want to. Now I have a bunch of different queries, one, two, three, four different queries. I can keep adding queries if I want to, or if I feel like I have enough papers because this is already more than 32 papers and we got, you know, probably somewhere between 50 or maybe even 60 papers. I can start narrowing them down. I can do that by extracting more data about them and ruling them out, or I can just do a quick title review and delete papers that are not relevant. And the best part is you can actually combine papers across all of these queries into one single table. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna select, 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 select all these papers. I have 72 papers, okay. So I've collected 72 papers. And if I create a new table from them, they're all in one place. And then I can, if I have certain inclusion criteria or exclusion criteria, I can extract data about them and then systematically go through all of my papers in one place and, you know, delete the ones that are not relevant. Another way to use this workflow that can be pretty nifty is if you just want to first start and think about, if you just want to first think about all the possible queries, you can do that, right? Before even looking at the papers, you can just say, you can just type in query one, and then while that's still loading, type in query two. And so and this is gonna produce weird results, but basically you can kind of be in one frame of mind, right? So you can first focus on the task of thinking of, about all of the relevant queries for your project and just focus on that without getting a bit distracted on coming up with relevant search terms and then also looking at the results. Just focus on the one task of generating all the relevant search terms, ask as many as you want, then you go back and take a second pass and for each result, look for each, for each query or for each search term, look at the results, refine them, iterate them, screen them in or out, and then continue that way. I think that can also be really helpful because research, it can get so explosive and it can get so broad that it helps to focus on one task at a time. And then the nice thing is you have the log of every single thing that you've done. 
So your notebook now has every single search term that you've tried, and then you can come back to it five weeks from now and come back and load more papers if, if, if you want to. All of your work will be saved here in your history. If you're doing a formal systematic review, I think this is best used as a supplement to whatever search methods you already have so that it's strictly more comprehensive and you're getting more papers. I think in terms of as a replacement, it's just not as established using illicit for search. So you probably just want to use it as a way to find more papers that your traditional searches didn't surface. And yeah, in another video, I'll show you how you can go from 72 or more papers and systematically go get, get to the most relevant papers because it's obviously very overwhelming. But Alyssa makes it pretty easy to identify what these papers are about so that you can figure out if they're relevant for your research or not. So in summary, for any one query, you can load a very, very large amount of papers. You can just keep clicking, load more. I mean, we're, search we're ranking across millions of papers, so go crazy. You can ask lots of different queries to surface different uh, subsets of our research database and get different results including queries that have certain criteria about the study type or the publication date or other other features. Once you have a very, very large collection of papers, you can combine them into a single paper and then systematically filter for the ones that are most relevant for you. And you can also use Elicit to search through the citation graph forward and backwards and find more relevant papers or find underlying primary studies or find, you know, later work that referenced a particular paper. Great. I hope that was helpful. I hope you go crazy and get as many, many papers as your heart desires. Thank you.